So, hi, um, welcome. My name is Fabian. I am a software developer working for Consol in Munich, Germany. And within the next 30 minutes, I'm going to give you an introduction to Prometheus, the monitoring tool. So um, I am myself, I'm not a Prometheus core developer, so I'm more a fan showing you my favorite tool here. And for this talk, I didn't prepare any slides because I think the best way to show you Prometheus is just to get it up and running and play with it. And so you see what it's all about. And for the few words of introduction I have before we start the demos, um, I just created some text files, but I, I don't have these fancy editor extensions that Venkat has, so I skip it and <laughs> start with the demo uh, pretty quickly, right? So the, the talk um, is divided into two parts. First is a general Prometheus overview. I assume that most of you maybe haven't tried Prometheus or don't really know what it is exactly or how it differs from other monitoring tools. So I'm giving you a general introduction of all the tools involved so that you know what Prometheus is all about. And once we know that, I give you an outlook on how you would instrument your own Java applications so that they can provide metrics for Prometheus. So let's get started. The, um, a few bullet points before we start the demo. Prometheus is an open source monitoring tool started at SoundCloud by ex-Googlers. So these people used to work at Google, started working at SoundCloud and found that there is no decent open source tool that they could use to monitor the infrastructure the way they used to do it at Google. So they took their whole ideas they got from Google and started their own open source monitoring project, which became Prometheus. At its core, the Prometheus server itself is basically just a time series database. So what's a time series database? It's a database storing floating point numbers. It, it stores sequences of 64-bit floating point numbers together with the timestamps when these numbers were measured. Apart from the time series database, Prometheus also provides a powerful query language that you can use to evaluate the data in the time series database, right? And this is not the typical monitoring approach. So, but this is the, the um, basic functionality of the Prometheus server and everything else you would expect from an actual monitoring solution like a dashboard, like alerting, like exporters providing metrics for, uh, about operating systems and stuff. All these things are external modules. They're external programs developed independently of the actual Prometheus server. And this modular approach resonates really well with the open source community. So there is, there is a large number of GitHub projects, a lot of people involved um, implementing exporters, and there's a lot of things going on, right? Um, Last bullet point here before we start with the demo. So the general approach towards monitoring that Prometheus takes is a white box approach. So in monitoring, you can um, distinguish between black box monitoring and white box monitoring. And black box monitoring means that the application you monitor doesn't really know it's being monitored. So basically, you send an HTTP request. And if you get 200 OK, you say, OK, application up and running. That's fine. And this is how typical traditional Natius checks work. And Prometheus, I mean, of course, you can do this with Prometheus, but the intention of Prometheus is another approach. The intention is that the applications should provide metrics about what's going on inside the application. So that's why I show you in the second part how you would do this in Java. The more Pr Prometheus can learn about what's going on in an application, the more benefit you can have from evaluating the data with the query language and so on. Like data could be how often are my endpoints called, how long did the requests take, if I'm using a database, how often do I call it, how long does it take, if I maintain any business objects, how many of them do I have. And so the more data you provide to Prometheus, the more benefit you would gain from that, right? So, but let's uh, go to the demo part. I downloaded basically just the tar.gzip files from the GitHub release pages. So there's nothing prepared or so. So everything I do now, you can do on any Linux system with just downloading these things. And um, the first thing you need to just start with Prometheus, obviously you need some metrics. You need something to monitor. And the easiest way to get some metrics to start with is using something called the node exporter. I will extract it here. Whoop. 
go to this directory. So the Nord node exporter is basically a simple tool providing, or it's, it's not simple in that sense, but it's easy to start it. Um, it's a tool providing metrics about Linux operating systems. So it provides metrics about hard disk usage, network, um, CPU, all these kind of things. So it basically takes all the information from the proc file system and Actually, in, in this Linux proc file system, you find quite some sophisticated metrics about what's going on with your operating system, and uh, the node exporter makes all this available to Prometheus. And when you download it, you see that it's basically just a single executable. That's um, because it is written in Go, like most of the Prometheus tools, and like Prometheus server itself also. And Go just compiles to a single executable, so you don't need any runtime or interpreter or anything. You just download it for your architecture and start it. And once you have started it, you can use your web browser to just show what it exposes. So it opened a port 9100, and if I go there, whoop, I see some Prometheus metrics. So that's how they look at, like if you open them with a web browser. I can, for example, search for network, for example. So what I see here is the number of bytes I received on my network device ETH0 is 2,345. So at least in this virtual machine that I'm using for the demo right now. Right? This text format is one representation of uh, Prometheus metrics. Um, there's also a protocol buffer space format, so if the Prometheus server talks with an exporter, they might use protocol buffers to have a bit more efficient communication. But that's basically the, the basic information, so more or less key value pairs for the time series database. Right, so now as we have some metrics, we can go ahead and start the actual Prometheus server. Whoop! Um, I got it downloaded here already, so let's unzip it, Prometheus go to this directory, and again, it's, it's just a simple, single, uh, single executable called Prometheus, but before we start it, we need somehow some way to tell it what to monitor. Like, we want to tell it that we have our node exporter running on localhost port 9100, and Prometheus should monitor this. And the easiest way to do this in some uh, simple scenario is to just statically configure it in a configuration file. Prometheus comes with an example configuration file, which is this here. And down here it has a section, um, Prometheus also provides metrics about itself. So you can use a Prometheus server to monitor the Prometheus server itself. And it's pre-configured here in this example. So what we can do is we can just copy this down here, give it another name, say we want to monitor the node exporter. And we go here and say node exporter is running on port 9100. So that's the kind of configuration that you need. Um, when you see this, you might think that this doesn't really scale for real world applications. So if you have a large number of exporters, a large number of components of your systems, you cannot just statically configure all the endpoints. And especially if you have dynamic environments, scaling up, scaling down, this is, becomes kind of impossible. And this is actually not the whole story. So Prometheus is pretty good with service discovery. Prometheus integrates a lot of different service discovery mechanisms you can choose from. You can, for example, use DNS service discovery, the domain name system based. It integrates really well with Kubernetes. So if you have Kubernetes running, it can use Kubernetes directly to discover your services. It also has some more uh, like hands-on approaches, like dynamically monitoring configuration directories where you just, during the runtime, drop some files and they will be read. So there's a lot of options that you have. So just because I edit this text file here in the, in the demo, it doesn't mean that this is some limitation of Prometheus. But it's a good uh, way to do things when you just want to get it up and running and get started, right? So let's start the Prometheus server. And it opens port 9090, so let's go to localhost port 9090, and you get this here. Um, as I said, Prometheus doesn't really come with a built-in dashboard that you would use for monitoring. However, once you start Prometheus, you want to have some way to just figure out if everything is the way it's supposed to be. You want some kind of debugging UI where you can just check if everything works. And this is the debugging UI that's included in Prometheus. 
you can do things like clicking on configuration and you see the configuration file that was loaded. You can check if that's the same that we just edited. You can click on targets. You see the targets being monitored. We see here it's um, our node exporter on port 9100. It's the Prometheus server itself on port 9090. Both are up and running, so that's nice. And you have this here, which is a UI where you can try Prometheus queries. So what we can do here, we can add a, enter a query, like for example, the network. So it also has this nice auto-completion. If you don't know exactly how your metric is called, you will find it. Like we can, for example, query the network receive bytes, and we, will, we see here, let's zoom in a bit, that again, on device ETH0, we have, whoop, that many bytes received, right? This is uh, so the most simple kind of Prometheus query that you can do. You also see, see that uh, originally there was only one label, the device, and when uh, Prometheus ingested this data, it added some other labels telling us where it got this metric from. So if you have multiple instances of Node Exporter, you can uh, see here where it comes from. So what we can do now is we can play with the query language a bit. So for example, if you are not interested in all metrics for uh, received bytes, but only in metrics for device ETH0, you can do it like this. You say device equals ETH0. Whoop. So you get only one result, right? And basically what we see here, it's, it's a bit, if I zoom in, it doesn't really... Uh. So what you see here on the right, this number, is um, basically just the latest value from the database. And sometimes you're not only interested in the latest value, but you might be interested on the development of this value over time. So what you can do is you can specify a time interval here, like five minutes, and whoops, now you get all values that were ingested within the last five minutes, together with the timestamp when they were um, ingested. Um, Apart from these basic operators, uh, Prometheus has functions. There is, just to show you an example, there is a, a function called rate, which takes such a time interval as parameter. So I call rate here, give this as parameter. And this rate function um, calculates the per second average within this time interval. So I now know per second in average, I received 44 bytes on um, my device ETH0 when I look in the, at the time window of the last five minutes. So that's the kind of queries you can build. Uh, the Prometheus query language is actually pretty powerful, so you can easily make a whole talk just showing you all the features. But um, fortunately, it's pretty well documented. So if you are interested in all the capabilities that it has, just go to prometheus.io and documentation and querying, and then you see a whole list of all the functions that are available and a list of all the operators that are available. You can, of course, relate different metrics to each other, like divide them by each other to have some ratios or sum them up. So you can do all kinds of things. So it's a pretty powerful language, right? And what you can also do here in this uh, demo, like um, debugging interface, you can always click on graph and see some graphical representation of how this value develop, developed over time. So, but in order to have a full like uh, monitoring setup, of course, we need a real like uh, dashboard. And basically the dashboard that's like most often used together with Prometheus these days is Grafana. So I can just extract Grafana go to this directory and start it. So it's again um, Grafana server, it's called. So it's again just a single executable also written in Go. Um, nah, it starts up, opens port 3000 for us, I hope. Dum -dum 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 -dum. Now, now it's there. <laughs> so if I go to localhost, for 3000, I see a brand new Grafana user interface, right? I can log in here with my uh, default username and default password that Grafana has. And the first thing I would do now to create a dashboard for my Prometheus monitoring server is to configure a data source. So you click on data sources, 
say, add data source. And the reason is Grafana is not a tool that was specifically developed for Prometheus. Grafana actually has been around for a while before it even had Prometheus support. It supports all kinds of uh, backends like CloudWatch, Elasticsearch, InfluxDB. So you see them all here. So it's more a generic dashboarding tool, right? So in order to use it with Prometheus, you need to just configure that we want to have Prometheus as a data source, give it a name, for example, this, and say like where the Prometheus server is reachable, localhost port 9090. So everything green, that is nice. And once you have configured the data source, Grafana gives us an example dashboard to get started with. We can import this here and see some typical Grafana dashboard. So this da dashboard basically visualizes the metrics that Grafana, um, uh, that Prometheus monitors about itself. Because every Prometheus server typically monitors itself. <laughs> No, oh, thanks. Because every Prometheus server typically monitors itself, so uh, we can assume that more or less these self-monitoring metrics are always available, so that's a good like starting point to have some example dashboard, right? And we see these single stat metrics, like my server is up for six minutes now. We see some uh, information about the local storage in the time series database or some graphs here showing us how long it took to query the endpoints that we are monitoring and all, all stuff like that, right? And if we want to go ahead now and start our own dashboard, we can just, like, it's pretty easy. So you click everything with the UI here, and once you're done, you can also export it in JSON format and pass it to your colleagues or something or create a backup. Um, so I can say dashboard new, and I get an empty dashboard, and then I can start adding things, like, for example, a graph. And now I need to define a query that should be visualized. And of course, this one uses the same query language here that we have in our debugging UI, because it just sends the query over to Prometheus. So you can basically uh, can copy and paste it. You can basically put any Prometheus query here. And once you've done it, now I get a graph. Let's zoom in a bit, visualizing the per second average of number of bytes going through my network device ETH0. Like, so that's how things typically work, right? Um, let's go back. So that's uh, the Prometheus overview. Um, one thing I left out is alerting, because it's a bit more complex to show, because you need some destination where the alert should go to. And, but basically, alerting works like this. You configure your alert in Prometheus. I think I have an example also um, here. So you configure alerting like this. You say, I have an alert. And then you say, you can use any kind of Prometheus query. Like, I don't know where I got this example from. But you say, if the result of this query here, nah, ha, if the result of this query here has a value of greater than one for at least a minute, then I want to trigger an alert. So this is the kind of configurations that you do. You can use any kind of query that Prometheus offers to define these things. And once the alerts are triggered, Prometheus doesn't do anything with them. Prometheus just hands them over to the alert manager. And the alert manager is a tool that does things like routing the alerts to its destination. Like you can have different routes, say one alert is not so important, it just goes to an email. One alert is very important, it goes to a pager service, for example. You can have silencing, saying like if this alert happens and it repeats itself, then I'm only interested in the first instance and for the next three hours when the same alert comes repeatedly, it should be silenced. And all these things are configured in the external alert manager application. So the Prometheus server itself can really focus on its time series database and query language functionality, right? Good. So that's uh, the Prometheus overview. I hope you all got some idea how things work. And... Now, in the last uh, part, I would like to show you how you would instrument your own Java application to provide metrics for Prometheus. So basically, I mean, having information about your operating system, hard disk and network and everything is nice, but to get really the most value out of Prometheus, you should like um, 
provide some metrics about what's going on in your application because then you can use the query language and relate this to other things and then you can really gain insights into your application that are not really possible with uh, traditional black box monitoring tools. Um, I have a small Java application here. So the, um, the very simplest REST service application that I could find is this here. It's a Spring Boot Hello World example. So basically it says if the browser goes to this URL, we respond with a string Hello World. So and now let's instrument this application. So what kind of metrics could we provide for this? Of course, we could provide a counter telling us how often this endpoint is called. And then using functions like rate, we can calculate how often it's per second and all these things, right? We could also do some other metrics, like we could measure the time, how long it takes, and provide some statistics about the duration of these calls. But for having a simple example, it's, it's good to just start with a counter. So if you want to add a Prometheus counter to this uh, kind of application, there are basically two ways to do that. The first and recommended way is to use the Prometheus client library for Java. So Prometheus provides a client library for all kinds of operating uh, for all kinds of programming languages and including Java of course and if you control the source code and are free to add a new maven dependency the best thing you can do is just add this official Prometheus client library as a maven dependency and use it directly so that's the the main approach so to say however sometimes the may not be possible, maybe because you already have some other metrics framework in your application, or maybe you don't even control the source code. And even in that case, it might be possible that you can monitor your application with Prometheus, because there are a lot of projects uh, that build bridges from some uh, monitoring tool to Prometheus. For example, if I have um, Spring Boot here, I might already use Spring Boot actuators for measuring metrics. And there is actually a Spring Boot actuator to Prometheus Bridge. So I can just add a new endpoint here for this bridge, and then all my Spring Boot actuator metrics will automatically also be available for the Prometheus server. If you have more a standard Java EE application, you maybe have JMX beans for monitoring your stuff. And there is a JMX exporter. You can start it as an external application or as a Java agent. It attaches to your existing mBeans and provides inform, uh, metrics that it gathers from these mBeans to Prometheus. In order to do that, you don't even need to control the source code of your application. It's just a, it acts like a regular Java agent or, or JMX client, right? So these are the, the two big examples, Spring and Java EE, but also if you have some smaller third-party application, like, for example, Drop Wizard, there's a Drop Wizard to Prometheus bridge, and there are others. So... There is a lot of projects in, in this area, right? But let's just go ahead and uh, show you the Prometheus client library for now. Um, so if I add a counter with this library here, it looks like this. So basically, I say I want to have a counter, give it a name that uh, will be visible to Prometheus, give it a help message, and call register, which registers this counter with the global um, static variable that's called the Prometheus registry. It's just some variable defined in the library, and you can access it, access it from everywhere. And then whenever my endpoint is called here, I just say increment, so the counter counts the number of times this uh, endpoint was accessed. And the second thing I need is um, I need some endpoint for Prometheus, so Prometheus can fetch these metrics. So I, I created an endpoint here called Prometheus metrics. So what I do is I uh, use this default registry, which is the global variable that comes with the library where all my metrics are registered. And then I use a text format writer that also comes with the library and just write all the metrics to the output stream for the client. So let's try and run this maven clean package and java minus char so let's see it should should compile no i didn't even change the code so okay looks good so now spring boot is coming up um 
Yes. So if I go now to localhost port 8080, I see my Hello World application. Let's re reload it once more. So whoop, now we should have accessed it two times. And now if I go to this metrics endpoint, ah, cool, I see the, na, nah, hello, here. <laughs> I see the, um, the metric, like uh, my request total counter just with a value of two. So that's the thing that we have added. Um, all right, I have actually some, some more examples here. Um, um, Promises for Java developers, so for Spring Boot Actuator, JMX, and Drop Wizard, but I, I don't know if it makes sense, like I have four minutes left, so to go through them also, just want to tell you, I mean, this the thing that I showed you is kind of the recommended approach and easiest approach, and if you cannot do this and have some kind of other metrics library, just look into these things, they are all similarly easy to, to use, right? So, um, let's wrap, wrap up. Um, this was an introduction to Prometheus. So I had my focus a bit on like how you get things up and running, and I hope you all got the impression that it's not so hard to get started with it. And I really can encourage you, like install some Prometheus server, try it out, provide some metrics, because you don't need to invest much time and you can just start playing with it. However, like even if, if I, I just showed the very simple things here, don't assume that Prometheus is just a toy tool. It's really a sophisticated tool being used in really large environments. Of course, at SoundCloud itself, but also DigitalOcean are using it for monitoring their infrastructure. So you really, uh, it's a really powerful and, and very efficient tool. Um, so thank you very much. We have about three minutes left now for questions. Is there any? Yeah. How, so the question was, uh, how about monitoring JVM? And I think as the JVM does not directly provide any Prometheus metrics yet, yet I would say that uh, using JMX, what's the best option? Yeah. Yeah, one more. If you can scrape log files, that's a pr pretty... Nice questions because I actually wrote a log file scraper for Prometheus. <laughs> so there are two projects. One is uh, my little toy, but one other one is, is called Mtail, which is by Google, which is a lot more sophisticated. So I have more a, like a smaller and easier one. <laughs> and so, yeah, you can do that. So you can basically, I mean, the, the main thing you want to do is to count log lines matching some pattern. So you want to know how often does this exception appear in my log, so that's the most easy thing. But you can also extract like numbers appearing in your log files or stuff like that. So that's easily possible. So one more over there. Is it possible to push metrics? No, it isn't. <laughs> that's uh, basically, so the, if you hear talks by the like founders of the Prometheus project, they often describe this push versus pull as a kind of religious debate because there are people who believe that everything with push is better and other people believe everything with pull is better. And they describe Prometheus as a tool that lives in the church of pull. So it's actually, so the, the opposite would be Elasticsearch, like where you just push all your log lines into an Elasticsearch cluster. And that basically means that all your like applications need to know where the monitoring server is so they can push the log files there. Prometheus goes the other way around, so Prometheus needs some service discovery, but the actual services don't need to know where the Prometheus server is running. So it's a kind of decision, and the decision with Prometheus is that they just do pull, so that's the way it operates. Okay, so thank you very much. Have a nice conference. <laughs>